Welcome to the Space Podcast. We have a special guest, and he is a legend in the sport of bodybuilding, known as the Black Prince, aka Mr. Lifestyle. He's 78 years young, yet with a body that even a 30 year old top bodybuilder can <laughs> wish for, and probably the fittest and the healthiest human on the planet that I've ever met. Uh, a little background on Robbie. He did and won 300 amateur bodybuilding contests before going pro. He's Mr. America, Mr. World, Mr. Universe, Mr. International, Mr. Olympia tall class, Mr. Olympia heavyweight class. You got a Knight of the Champions, couple of them, right? We got the first Masters Mr. Olympia, 94 and a total of three masters, Mr. Olympia. You got the 97 and the 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robbie Robinson, welcome to the Space Podcast. Awesome. So, Sexy. <laughs> I love it. We were like, should we call this podcast Sexy or Space Podcast? We, we're still figuring it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So a little bit of background, how I met Robbie. Uh, I've been going to Gold's Gym, Venice, the Mecca, since 2007, which happened like two days after I moved to Los Angeles. And I've seen Robbie many times just doing his thing. He is this person with incredible, classic, aesthetic, old school physique, V taper, wide shoulders, small waist, full chest, peaked bicep. And uh, it was intimidating for me to reach out to you. But finally, uh, a couple of years ago, I decided to come over and say hi. <laughs> and I said, Robbie, I would love to get a training session with you. And you said, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it all started. Um, we got that first session and then we got a few more. And uh, since then, uh, my body completely transformed. I changed the way I eat. I changed the way I train. I changed the way I think. And in a way, you are a mentor to me. And I truly respect um, what you do for everybody in the bodybuilding community. All the knowledge that you have and you share. I've read your book, uh, My Life in Bodybuilding, Muscle versus Hustle, multiple times. I, I love the story. And uh, I would love to share this story with the world because I think everybody needs to know about this incredible specimen of a human being, 78 years young, <laughs> looking like 30. So, Robbie, let's uh, dive in into your story. Mm -hmm. There are many bodybuilding legends um, from the golden era that have nicknames. Like if I say the Austrian Oak, we think of Arnold. If I say the Sardinian warrior, we think of Franco Colombo. If I say Big Red, who's that? Kenny Waller. Kenny Waller. Mm -hmm. And then there's the one and only the Black Prince, Mr. Robert Robinson. How did you get that nickname? I think Joe Weed was the one that created it. He came in and talked about, you know, Robbie Robinson, the Black Prince. And uh, I think it was based on the way I carried myself and behaved and dress and the way I talk and my whole attitude about training and my physique. I mean, Joe Weed took and used my physique as his own monument for his company. That tells you a lot. Um, it wasn't supposed to be that way, but that's how it ended up. And I can respect the man for making that decision. But it caused me a lot of grief <laughs> 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 because it wasn't supposed to be my physique. That's the museum on the man. It's supposed to be a six times, seven times Mr. Olympia winner. Absolutely. Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, and we'll, we'll uh, dive into that. Yeah. I we mean, have for, that for him story. To do that, it was a big thing. Yes. Yeah. So let's jump right into it. 1975, you come to Los Angeles. You get invited by Joe Weider to train at the Mecca, do some photo shoots, compete, correct? Exactly. How did that happen? Like, what was your first impression of Los Angeles? You, you are land in LA. What are you thinking? 
You know, I'm from, I, I grew up in the swamps of Florida, so I didn't really have uh, any idea that someone of that notoriety and that famous and known all over the world himself, that was a magazine publisher, uh, would even reply to the letter. So I sent him some pictures of myself, double bicep from the rear, double bicep from the front, side chest shot, and um, Richard Baldwin was the one that took the photographs of myself. Mm -hmm. And I put them all together, sent him this little package of me, not expecting to hear anything from him. Then I got this letter from Weeder Publication. His name was on there. Joe Weeder had signed it. I was ecstatic. Um, he invited me to come out to Los Angeles, California, 1975, to train with the Weeder Boys. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, I had an incredible job working at the Tallahassee Democrat. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, that was a magazine, right? You worked for it was a magazine. No, it was it was a demo, it was a newspaper. A newspaper, it was a yes. newspaper, and yes. I worked for this newspaper for like almost seven, eight years. And then all of a sudden, I'm <clears throat> one thing that newspaper did was publish all my wins. They would write little articles of Robbie Robinson won Mr. Southeast, you know, Robbie Robinson placed fifth in the Mr. America. And so I was getting known pretty much all over Florida. And then I got the letter from Joe Weeder invited me to come to train with the Weeder boys. As I say, I was ecstatic. Mm -hmm. My whole world changed. I um left immediately to Los Angeles, California, two paychecks. Mm -hmm. And no. I think I put seven dollars in my pocket and two paychecks. I love it. And I got to California. Uh, found a way to get to Gold's Gym, got to Gold's Gym, I walked in. The first person I encountered was Eddie Giuliani. And Jelly <laughs> Giuliani goes, um, I said, I'm, I'm coming here to train with the Weeder Boys. And I showed him the letter, and everybody started laughing. Another sucker. Uh -oh. That's what they said. Oh, you, you've been sucker too. Uh -oh. And I was like, oh, kid, don't care what is this, what is he talking about? And he said... <laughs> This guy does that to all the guys that have great physiques. And at this point, you know, I had a one-way ticket and my two paychecks and the seven dollars. So I'm thinking, oh man, have I gotten myself into trouble? Because I see in my course, you can't go back home and say anybody's done anything, especially if you're gonna bring up where well, the white person wouldn't let me do this, they would say, Hey, you should have thought about that before you left. Totally. So I couldn't go back home. So I'm standing there and I'm thinking, Oh God, what am I going to do? What am I gonna do? Didn't have a place to stay, no apartment, and uh, I was just kind of stayed around the gym. Ken Sprague's kind of let me sleep in the gym, and I was from that point on totally brain dead. Then I met a guy from Florida. His name was Mike Armstrong. He was a school teacher. Uh huh. In that process, Mike let me stay at his place to help get me grounded. So I feel a little bit more comfortable with myself. He lived right off the beach. Probably walk out of his door right to Gold's gym. Wow. So I had that little gift from the man upstairs uh -huh. and Mike. If it wasn't been for Mike, I probably would have been on the street. Wow. So I'm standing there and I'm thinking, Mike ate steak, Robbie ate steak. <laughs> Mike went out to eat, Robbie went out to eat. If Mike uh, went out someplace to do anything, Mike will always take me with, him, with me. He was a school teacher, good guy. Yeah. White from Florida. Uh huh. And he recognized the fact that he said, you know, you've been set up, man. It's just, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. You're not in a good place. You can just use my place. And I mean, that was a gift because I, ah, I could relax. <laughs> <laughs> At least I had a stomping ground, a sleeping place to sleep. Of course. Had my own little bed to sleep right there by the door. And, you know, Mike stepped in the other bedroom. And then um, for some unknown reason, um, Joe Weeder asked me to come out to the office. Yes. So they let me go out to the office. I got to ride out to the reader's office. I'm, I go into the office. I sit there. One hour go by, two hours. I sit there for like almost three and a half hours waiting to see him. Uh huh. And then finally I got a chance to see him. I went up to his office, invited him to his office. Is I this the first time you guys met? Yeah. Got it. the first time we had met. I sit there in, the, in, this, in this office in his big chair. And he was sitting across in front of me and he looked at me and he says, um... I don't give blacks contracts. Mm. I th think I could have, on a psych psychological, it just stopped inside of my head. And I'm saying, well, but you know, you gave me this letter. He just kind of sucked it off, got up and walked out the room and left me there. Annalise Light was his secretary. And uh, she said, oh, Miss, uh, Mr. Robinson, I mean, you have to wait downstairs mm -hmm. after that little short meeting. Uh -huh. And so I went down the stairs and waited for three and a half, another three and a half hours till it was closing. And then um, she came to the stairwell and said, 
Uh, Mr. Weeder just left. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay. And then uh, Denny Gable was the guy that had drove me out to the reader office. That's how we became friends. Got it, yes. And he drove, he came and he said, you know, let's go. We left and went on the way home. And he said, he said, I'm sorry about that, Robert. He said, but, you know, that happened to a lot of guys. Yeah. He said, um, you know, that's just something you have to like deal with, you know. So, so it was like I a, was able to suck it up. Yeah. And deal with it. I got a call from Gene Mose, who was the weeder photographer at this yes. point. He said, uh, Joe, we don't want to get a, uh, do a cover shot of you. Mm -hmm. That changed my life. Wow. Right there. All of a sudden, I'm on the cover, splitting this incredible physique for them, in a sense. And uh, from that point on, I started getting exhibitions and seminars all over the world. So it was like rude awakening. You come to LA, big dreams, yeah. one way ticket, and all the dreams are about to come true. You're at the Mecca, you're in LA, but then you meet Joe. And then it was like a, almost like a peak, then a valley. Exactly. It was a letdown. Oh, man, what did I get myself into? And then you get the photo shoot, and then you're on a peak again. Yeah, now exactly. the whole world knows yeah. about yeah, Robbie. Yeah, all of a sudden, I'm like getting calls from countries, Belgium and Germany and God, Latin America countries, Argentina, and they wanted me to fly to these gifts. And I'm thinking, like, I'm feeling like a superstar at this point. Yes. So all of a sudden, I'm making $750 an hour. I mean, $750 plus air expenses, uh -huh. plus, you know, hotel accommodation, plus airfare flight, business class. And I'm thinking, wow, this is a change in my life. And back then, $750 was oh, that's good a, money. At that time, period, that's a lot of money. Yes. And I got booked for, like, pretty much the whole year, $750. And then as I got more and more cover shots, more and more notoriety in the magazine, yes. I went from 750 to 800 to 1,000, 1,500 to 2,000. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so 1975 mm -hmm. is the year that Pumping Iron is about to take bodybuilding to the whole world's audience. Mm -hmm. And Arnold is the star of Pumping Iron. But Robbie is in the gym training. Yet... They tell Robbie, hey, Robbie, don't flex. Don't flex, Robbie. You might make Arnold look bad. <laughs> I flex anyway. You flex anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, 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 it was just a time period. I just wasn't used to that. You know, you, you know I'm, I'm have this position where I'm actually in a movie and I'm hearing people telling me, don't flex, just walk across the floor. I flex anyway. Uh, it caused a lot of bad feelings and stuff to the whole movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I said things like uh, that maybe in a sense at that point, being black, you're not supposed to say, but I said it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why not have a voice? You know, I'm a part of this whole thing. I have to say something. I have to voice my own opinion. And um, they didn't like that. You know, what can you say? I can't even see the guy. He's too little. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, hear, I hear this voice, but I don't see nothing. Hey, all right. No, remember the seven was inside all day. Just leave this South African tutorial. Right on. And look at that, another mouse in the background. Hey, what is that? Hey, I got a hundred dollars on Paul Grant. Oh, oh, this oh, 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 right there. Wait oh, until South African Pretoria and we'll all know who's the best. Hey, yeah, yeah, but wouldn't you, say, wouldn't you say that Ravi has to go, uh, go first through you and oh, Ken yeah. Waller to get to me? No. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. No. I mean, how can you make the fifth step of the ladder this when you didn't make the first? Gotta, they gotta I'm be already with you. Anna. Oh, I want to I think that Ravi is going to be the great black hope. <laughs> At the same time, when we went to... The first film of the Pump and Iron was in San Jose, California. Yes. Uh, we had this competition, the Russ Warner Classic. Yes. Russ Warner Classic invited all the guys there to guest pose, you know, at that competition. That was filmed uh, by Pump and Iron. Mm -hmm. So everybody's on stage is screaming and hollering. Arnold was posing. He came, and I would think I was the last one, brought the house down. I People saw that. People were screaming and hollering and calling my name. I had never experienced anything like that, mm -hmm. you know, so... You hear all these people that stand there, and I've seen 95, 99% of them were white males and females that were screaming and hollering my name. There were very few persons of color in that audience. Yes. So to hear them calling my name and screaming my name, that to me was like, wow, it was an awakening. You must have a cold-blooded physique because you can't see yourself in your mind sometimes. Yes. Just someone else react to you. But having all these people react to me and 
you know, clap and call my name and yep. cheer me on while I'm up there posing. I was ecstatic about it. So that was like a validation that yeah, your yeah. body is the body. Yeah, exactly. It's being recognized. Exactly. And uh, and that's in the yeah, opening yeah, scenes I, of I the I don't like to get into that color and race thing, but yes. it was huge. Yes. Uh, they were was, they was saying to me that where did he get that body from? I have to say this. That nigga got a white boy's body. I said, awesome. <laughs> that sucks. Because <laughs> I didn't have any concept of all of what was going on and what kind of body I had. You know, it was only recognized when I would go to the, when I went to the Weeders office and would be in the Weeders office in the art department, basically all his art people were women. Mm -hmm. And they would walk up to me and grab my hand and put their phone numbers in my hand and say, Robbie, you got the better body. <laughs> Your cover sell the best. <laughs> and so that, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps here talking to you about it. Chills because of the fact that they inspired me. They gave me the belief. They helped me believe in myself. Yes. Really. But I Joe mean, never Joe never told you, hey, no, Robbie, you sell no, magazines. No, 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 no. You were those, getting it from the ladies. Those ladies that were in that office built my confidence. They gave me the ability to go back in that gym every day and kill it. And each time I went out there and would see them, uh, wherever they are, even today, I think to myself, wherever they are in the world today, God bless them. Yeah. Because they definitely built my confidence. They gave me all the desire, pumped my desires and my <laughs> my mindset to just, you can get better and get better and get better. You just got to keep focusing on what Don't pay attention to all that other negative stuff. Yes. Because I didn't. If I had it, I would not be here. Man, sometimes that's all you need. Just one little push. You don't know where it's going to come from, but that one little push, somebody believing in you, and it's going to take you forward oh, take, that's oh, yeah. all you need that's all you need it's, it's you know as we was talking earlier but that it's who you have in your corner yes it's the people that say the good things to you instead of that's right block all that negative stuff i listen to the good things that people say about you that's and right that's what i was able to do seriously that's <clears> awesome <throat> so pumping iron i i'm quoting from the book because i've read it a bunch of times uh that uh, contest you did in San Jose was included in the documentary. It opened up with that, actually, and you looked amazing. And I heard the cheers. And then I didn't see you much throughout the movie because I see a little outtake when they filmed it in Arnold's house. And everybody started to drink and have a good time. The, the director of the movie said, well, you know, guys, nobody's getting paid. They and that didn't sit well with you. They took me out of it. They tried to not involve me in it or not call my name to appear in it because of the fact that I was still in the scenes from him. I yes. wasn't still in the, um, because people wanted to see my physique. Yes. I mean, nothing wrong with he was such time as Olympia. So I said to myself, he deserved that right. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to block it or say anything. And it uh, all came down in San Jose when we was in the, after the competition was over and all the, Everybody was at having a big party and everything. Mm -hmm. We were all in there dancing, and you know, you know, here's a, here's, I'm a black guy. You know, you're not dancing with no white women. Mm -hmm. Nobody could even think that would even be possible. Mm -hmm. And then they was filming all of this, and then the process of on comes in the room down with the blacks, hmm. and he kept blacking this and black. I was the only. I start looking around. I'm the only black. In, <laughs> I'm the only black in the room. So I just walked out, went to my hotel room, went to sleep. Wow. And I, I remember hearing Joe Weider say, Arnold, Arnold, stop that. Stop that. And as he was saying it, I was already walking out of the room. Wow. But you know, that, you know, it didn't, it didn't anger me. It empowered yeah. me. See, in my culture, if someone used those derogatory names, it breaks them down. It never yeah. broke me down. You know, you it made me stronger. You turned it into something positive, positive yeah. because you are yeah. huge on mindset. It's all about positive it's mindset. Mindset. If you let anything crack this, you're done. Yes. You know, you got to be more powerful than anything that can happen. To and you, you made it productive. Yeah. You, you went to train harder. Yeah. You have to make, yeah, you, you have to look at it that way and get yourself be consumed by what is positive instead of what is negative. I've never been able to do that. Even when I was playing football and sports and everything like that, even when I went to the army and I definitely wanted to go AWOL or desert, go, really, really, I yes. didn't want to go to Vietnam and fight the war. Why yes. am I going to fight people that I don't even know anything? They have done anything to me. Yes. That's what I was saying to myself. But then I just thought, you know, suck it up. Yeah. 
And I got into the training and the hard work. Mm-hmm. Won Soldier of the Month five times. I mean, it's just turning things around. Of course. That's what I've always done, been able to turn it around. Whatever negative I confronted it with, I would might get pissed off and get upset about it. But then it, this is, it's just something would come over me and just chill out. Yeah. You get lemons, you make lemonade. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's very important to take the good and the bad. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You, life is not going to always be good to you. Oh, no. Yeah, you have oh, no. to take those bad moments. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I got to be honest, one thing that actually got me into bodybuilding, I love bodybuilding. Like, I am a huge bodybuilding fan. It's like I've been following it for a long time and uh, I love all the stories and all the knowledge that I've got and all the friendships that I've created. One thing that got me into bodybuilding is pumping iron. Yet, I didn't, iron? Yeah, yeah. Yet I did not know that this was not a real movie. It was a docudrama. It was scripted. It was made for Arnold. And then as I started to dive deeper and learn about all the other people involved in the documentary, like mm-hmm. you, like Serge Nubray and few others, mm-hmm. I've been fascinated by everybody involved in this movie. And uh, I know that this movie is only 85 minutes long, but there is 100 plus hours of footage. Like, I would love to see some footage of you training back then, even other people involved in the movie. But I know that uh, Arnold bought uh, all that footage, so it's somewhere (laughs) stored. Mm -hmm. Joe, let me talk to him. You want to talk to Vasikov? Okay. Okay, Okay. fuck you. But I would love to see everybody from the golden era shown how they looked and how they trained. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't you think that anybody else has a chance to beat you like Robbie Robinson and Beckles and the others? No, come on, Joe. Because that would be amazing and awesome. That time that we spent in the gym preparing for that 90 days, that was a calendar on the wall. And each day you went in that gym, a day was removed. And you observe that, and you put all your time and energy into that diligently, right down to that peak week. Yes. And you worked and grinded yourself. You worked on those poses every day. People not believe it. Bodybuilding is is is, is stressful to the body. Yes. It's, it also has a certain amount of destruction to the body. So, eating healthy. I mean, having a positive frame of mind. Taking supplementation, you have to use all of these things. That's what everything is timing. Absolutely. Timing with supplementation, timing with the rest, timing with the food, timing with the training. So everything has to be on the time clock. And the better you get that whole system down on the time clock, the better results you get. Yeah. And this, of course, makes me think of your blueprint, which is all of those elements. It's Robbie's blueprint, which we're going to talk in a little bit. Let's stay in the golden era for another while. So. There are a few interesting stories I want to touch on. Supplements, right? Mm -hmm. I remember the story of a fan writing to you, like you were in the magazines, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, as a matter of fact, I have the magazine right here. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So this is Muscle Builder. This is Robbie. Yes, Muscle Builder, yeah. 1979, September. Remember this pose, the bust. We'll get to that as well. And there is a supplement promo. And it's Robbie and Franco. Robbie and Franco promoting Weeder protein powder. And you get a fan from a you get a letter from a fan saying, Hey Robbie, do you use that product? And you wrote the fan back, I actually don't. <laughs> and somebody got pissed. <laughs> Tell yeah, me I, about this story. What I, happened? I, I, just, I just thought it was a normal thing. You got this 13-year-old fan. Yes. And the kid sends me a letter and asks me, um, Mr. Robinson, do you use weed as supplements? And I said, no. And right after that, I got this uh, notification that, Robbie Robinson has been suspended for two lifetimes plus 20 years. Like one lifetime is not enough. Two. <laughs> two lifetimes. <laughs> two lifetimes plus 20 years. Wow. And I, I, my whole self fell apart because I'm thinking, you know, you know, what have I done? Yeah. And then I found out that the kid had sent the letter back to the Weeder office. Mm-hmm. Joe Weeder had confronted and called Ben Weeder. 
who was the president of the IFBB, uh -huh. and they had posted a letter in the magazine, Robbie Robinson has been suspended from the IFBB for, wow. for lying. For speaking the truth. For speaking the truth. Yeah. For having, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm quoting... didn't go into detail in, uh, sure. you know, what had happened. They just said, Robbie Robinson has been uh, suspended for two lifetimes for bad behavior. Yes. That's well, how they covered it up. I mean, here's the thing. You're so ahead of your time, and you were speaking the truth, and... Because you speak the truth, they're calling you the bad boy, right? That make me the bad guy. Right? Yeah. The bad guy. But today, everybody talks about it. Everybody talks about steroids, mm -hmm. right? And uh, back then, we know it's a fact that all the superstar bodybuilders, they were all taking steroids. Yet, everybody's selling powders and supplements. But we all know, in order to compete and to look like that, Arnold to be Arnold, yeah. he needs to take the special supplements, yeah, which yeah. is steroids. But nobody used it. Yes. Arnold didn't use it, Franco didn't use it. Nobody used the weed as supplement. Yes. I mean, it's 90% of it was sugar. Yes. So nobody really took it. If you used it, no disrespect to the company, to the business people. Yes. That, I mean, it's totally diuretic effect. I mean, yes. I'm talking about diarrhea effect along <laughs> with that. You, your body couldn't maintain it. It just, it was, wow. sad. It was sad that that situation happened with me because I spoke out about yeah. it. But it was just a true fact. I never used the product. Yeah. Well, you were about to disrupt the whole industry by speaking the That's, truth. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't like that. No, they didn't like it because that turned the whole industry against his product. A lot of it from this point on went from here to Europe. And they're still popping it. My image is still on the containers to this day. Yeah, I believe it. Your, your image is everywhere. I mean, yeah. we went, I trained with Vince Taylor uh, last week in Florida. Mm -hmm. Crazy story. But anyways, he says, hi, I have a great story that he told me about you. But on the door of the gym where we train, there's your bust. Exactly. It's still there. It's exactly. everywhere. It's still there. It's everywhere. And every law firm, you might not believe it, but I went to the law firms here in Los Angeles to get a lawyer. Yes. <clears throat> the guy told me point blank it cost you 50000 to even start. Wow. They would not take the case. Yeah. Uh, and I went back several times, used some of my money. <laughs> Yeah. They really had they didn't want to have they did one guy came to me and told me point blank, you know, I didn't do enough work on it. Yeah. And then he ended up losing his lawyer's license from stealing money from other people. Wow. So he stole my money plus their money. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's <laughs> that's life. You know, you, you put yourself in these situations and the, that part really hit me because I thought the judicial system overall protect everybody. Yes. The color of your skin didn't matter. If you were able to go in and say, Hey, listen, I need a lawyer to help me get myself through this, that would be available, but it wasn't yes. available. So that's another that. another valley that yeah. you had to get yeah, out of. Yeah, it's another down and back yeah. up again. <laughs> but that's that's just life. I mean, it's, it's sad that it happened. Yes. But, you know, that's just how it is. In, in that business, in that world, mm -hmm. at that time, they could shut you off. Yes. To quiet you down. And you can do nothing about it. No law firm wants to sue Joe Weider. Yes. Nobody. No, you don't go against the power. Um, so... One thing that you huge on is whole foods. And I'm like, I'm 43 years young. And I finally learned that the more whole foods I eat, the better my body looks. And uh, I finally stopped. Use, I'm using less shakes, even though they're tasty. My body looks incredible because I'm eating five meals a day, clean food, good amounts of protein, good amounts of fats, good amounts of carbs. I'm burning it all. It's about the food. It's not about the sugary powders or whatever uh but we're gonna talk also about uh training nutrition what you recommend of course your training principles and your blueprint now sticking to the supplementation you came to la fully natural your only supplement was real foods and i know that famous story of you going to gold's one day and i don't know who it was that told you wait there's no way robbie's natural and then they said, Robbie, you need to take this. This is the story about Primo, Primo Bowling Depot. How, how, how was that first experience for you with that supplement? The whole time we were training for that night of days, all of us training for the Mr. Olympia, his six Mr. Olympia, I was training for the Mr. World in New York. And in that process, I was handling the same weight. That, what really hit me hard, I was handling the same weight they were handling without steroids. And it, it amazed me. I was thinking like, wow, I knew they were doing something, mm -hmm. but nobody would tell me. Like, nobody told me anything <laughs> about steroids. I didn't even know. 
you know, it's, 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 it might sound sad and I might sound a little bit dumb, but I had no clue. It's the, that's where I learned that mind. You can do anything you want if you make up your mind. If you're in the right field of energy with the right group of people, they were the right group of people. Yes. And so I used that energy from all the people that were there and the, and the mindset of that, you know, I can do whatever they can do. Yes. And then right at the very end of it, I'm thinking we got like two weeks out. Uh huh. Um, I remember the, the guys that were running the gym asked me, Robbie, what you taking? And I said, what are you talking about? Because I say young, dumb, uh huh, didn't have the knowledge, didn't think anything was going on behind my, <laughs> my back, but it was. And uh, they said, well, um, come back this afternoon. They didn't say what to come back to. They just said, come back this afternoon. I had that mindset that something that all the other guys were using something because I'm looking at that physique being transformed to a whole nother level mm -hmm. in that 90 days. Said, Robbie, come back this afternoon. I came back probably about three or four o'clock. You see, you ever seen this? I said, what is that? Dom and Young. He said, well, this is Anabolic Sarah Prima Bowl and Depot. And I thought, well, okay. And he showed it to me. He cracked the top of the lid off the bottle, took out that one CC. And I said, well, what do you do with it? And he said, you have to shoot it in your hip. And he said, turn around. So we went into the bathroom. I turned around. He hit me with it. And I was like, man, by the time I walked to my, up to my house, second floor, knocked on the door, I collapsed. Oh, wow. But what I didn't know was the fact that I had sickle cell anemia and that the steroids thickens the blood. Mm. So that all the blood corpuscles gotten thicker and they weren't able to get the oxygen to my brain and to my heart. Wow. And I collapsed right there. <clears throat> You know, thank God that Elaine, who was my lady at that point, was able to drag me in the house. Oh, she was door. home. She yeah, was she home. was home. Wow. Drug me in the house, was able to pull me up, sit me against the tub, and tumble me over into the tub, bathtub and turn on cold water. Icy cold water and shocked me. Wow. I was shaking and everything, and she was crying and worried, and Robbie was wrong, and, da -da -da, and she was holding me in her arms and rubbing me, and talking to me and saying, Robbie, what's wrong? And I told her, you know, I don't know. I was incoherent. I didn't know what to say to her because I didn't want to get her all worried about it. And then I calmed down. I calmed down. I guess the cold water was a shock to my whole nervous system, my whole body system. Yes. And in that process, I was able to, I was revived. It almost like reset you back to yeah, she before. Yeah, revived me about, I think I, didn't eat anything or anything like that for maybe some hours. And then I kind of came, come back out of it, the whole thing. I'm two weeks out from the Mr. World now. Yeah. Uh, that one shot, I won the Mr. World competition, all the body parts, the most muscular man in the world, <laughs> most muscular man <laughs> <laughs> out of a crisis, right? Yeah. And it, it was just, it was just amazing. That one shot. Wow. Transformed my whole mindset, my body. Yeah. And I thought, that's whatever that is, that is some powerful. So, so I started reading about the yeah. alibi because I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, winning like that really brought the whole IFBB, the magazines to a whole nother level. They probably want me to do more covers, more uh, articles about training. Uh, I was getting more and more work now. So I'm getting like 1500 to do an exhibition or seminar pretty much all over the world at this point. So I was able to stabilize myself and make, and have a good, make a good living out of it. Yeah. Start to save my little money. <clears throat> got me an apartment, got me a car. Of course, I could drive, but Elaine could. She drove the car. Mm -hmm. And I was able to sustain myself and take my whole body to a whole nother level. Um, I mean, it was an incredible experience. I would say if a person is going to use alibi steroids, get your blood work done. Yeah. Get that done first so you know that if you have any kind of health issues that you can be guarded or the doctor could bring it to your attention. But right after winning the Mr. World and all of this, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Weeder uh, advised me and had me come to his doctor. Uh, was this Dr. Walzak? Dr. Michael Walzak was yes. the person that did the blood work on me and said, uh, Robbie, um, you have a um, sickle, cell, sickle anemia. cell anemia. Yep. And uh, you won't be able to do it like that often. Yeah. The doses have to be kept very low if you're going to use it. Um, 
So it was almost like a, eight weeks. It was almost like a blessing in disguise because you discovered there's this underlining condition that you had. Exactly. And thanks to that, work, now you know, have exactly. to be really careful. Yep. I will tell all the young guys out there, you can use all those anabolic substances, but you better definitely get your blood work done. Yeah. Because you don't know what kind of ongoing health issues you might have yeah. before you start the cycles. And I mean, definitely what I found out over the years, less is better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, get in shape. Yes. Really get in shape, lean, muscular shape. You can't be fat or overweight trying to do it. Absolutely. Because it's going yeah. to destroy the whole system, the whole network of how the body works. So I totally believe in you getting in shape, get that body fat down 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But can you do like 15, 20%? Nah. Yeah. There's no point. No, it doesn't, it, it don't make sense. You see, today's world, we live in a world of social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You got to look great all year round. Like you got to be in shape all year round to look good on these social media platforms. But if you are doing all this stuff, taking all these anabolics year round, you're doing a huge damage on your body. Now you are a perfect example of longevity and you've been bodybuilding for so many decades, <laughs> right? Piece and, of history. Right? And on top of it, you've only used it in a certain period of time and then back to whole foods and training, sleep, nutrition, uh, lots of water, but only for that window when you got a peak for the contest and that's it. It wasn't like year round. Would you say that those low doses and only for that specific period of time uh, that, that, kept that, your longevity up? The body is, it works better without stress. Yes. When you do take the alabaster, it definitely adds a certain amount of stress to your whole being. Yeah. So I always practice low doses, eight weeks. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to get my body fat down to 10%, 9%. Now from that point on, if I'm going to work it down 6%, by 6%, that's enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, the rest of it is just hard work, a little aerobics. Yes. I mean, definitely the supplementation, your meals, everything is on a time clock. And that's what I found. It works better with that kind of a substances, antibiotic substance. Everything on the time clock, the body just build muscle. Yes. And eating whole foods has been my key for, God, for 50, 60 yeah. years or more. So back in mid-70s, you went to a doctor and you got your blood checked. And that's how you discovered what's happening inside. I'm a, also a personal trainer here in LA. And I tell all my clients, look, do your blood panel so I know what's inside, it, how I can help exactly. you. If I don't have a picture of what's happening inside you, how am I gonna really help you? Exactly. I don't know what's going on. Let's check, see what's happening, and then we're gonna address how we're gonna proceed. And you were doing this since the 70s, and you've been doing the blood work ever since then. Ever since. And your blood panel, I'm assume it's looking pretty good at 78. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> One of the biggest things I think that I've discovered out of this was Dr. Uh, or Dr. Dr. Rand. Rand. Yes. Dr. Rand was one person that totally educated me about all of the nutrients and everything. Mm -hmm. and the intravenous feeding of all the vitamins. You, yes. All the amino acids, all the glutamines and creatines and all that stuff being intravenous fed into mm -hmm. the body to help build and keep the structure of the muscle mm -hmm. cell and the body's strength up. Yes. So... If it wasn't for Dr. Rand, I probably would have like had a lot more uh, it's a sickle cell crisis mm. because he helped keep that keep my body in a, a point of just peak. I was always peaking. Yes. And people could say, well, Robbie taking the No, no, no. Yeah. Eight weeks. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it came from intravenous feedings, yes. nutrients of five, six meals a day yes. of supplements and on the clock with every meal. Mm -hmm. I mean, keeping my water. The best thing what you can drink when you trying to really build a body is water. Yeah, I love what you, when you say, the best steroid in the world is water. It's water. <laughs> because without the water, it's not possible to build muscle. You're not gonna have the muscle size. You need to be able to have that body, be able to manipulate that body, especially yes. that peak week. You know, you're not gonna be able to just go in there and just win the show just because you're the most muscular person in the world. But you wanna have all that water that's in the skin, under the skin into the muscle cell. Absolutely. So on stage under the lights, you're gonna look harder and more dense. Posing shapes the body. If you're not posing, you can't. You, you're not gonna look right up of there. Of course. That's why a lot of guys up there and they're shaking. Yeah. 
because they haven't really worked and practiced those poses. Mm -hmm. The more you practice those seven mandatory poses, the more beautiful art piece you're going to be able to display on stage under the lights. So if we're going to endorse one anabolic steroid for everybody out there, regardless of their age, it's water. Water. <laughs> so it's take water. your water. If, you're not, if you don't get that water right, you know, I have this system where I tell a client, you drink water 30 minutes before your meal. Mm-hmm. 45 to 30 minutes after your meal. Mm -hmm. And what that does is just freeze up the emptiness of the colon, the mm -hmm. digestive tract. Everything is flushed out. It's better to drink the water a little warm. Mm -hmm. In the gym, maybe you need it a little bit cool. Yeah. Help the body flush itself and keep the temperature down in overall body, in your overall body. But I drink, the first thing I drink in the water is 16 ounces of lemon juice and water. Mm -hmm. Oh, so a little bit of lemon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and Robbie, then, whatever you're doing, it's working, man. It's working. Oh, look yeah. at you. I, I, and I love it. Yeah, I have this system, what I call the R, R, six-step program. Yes. And in that program, water is the key. I tell everybody, I mean, if you want that Is water body, step one? Hmm? Is water step one? Is it like the most important? Water is the first one. Wow. Yeah, that's the steroid. That's wow. what get the body going and manipulate, flush everything out of the body. It keeps the digestive system clean and fresh. I mean, it definitely floors and keep the skin, everybody in your body, overall internal organs hydrated. Mm -hmm. They slip and slide off of either thing better. Yeah. Uh, the body opens up better uh, with that water and allowing that water to flush everything out. So when it's flushing everything out, the body gets leaner, harder, more muscular. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I totally want to touch up on your six step uh, program, uh, the so called blueprint by Robbie Robinson. Six step blueprint, yeah. Yes. Uh, I got couple of more things from that golden era of bodybuilding and uh, one of them is the bust of mr robbie robinson <laughs> so i got you see i'm a big fan of bodybuilding and i study and i like to learn from like magazines from back in the day like this is 1979 robbie on the cover september that's the bust of robbie in flesh November, there is a bust in bronze. <laughs> now, can you see the <laughs> any difference here? There's a different head. So we have September, November. What happened here? How come your bust has Joe Weider's head? That's the major conflict. That was one of the things that created, I think, in a sense, everybody is aware of it, or bad feeling between Arnold and myself. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any bad feeling about it because I wasn't totally aware of it. Mm -hmm. I found out as I was going along that it was supposed to have been his body that we'd have used to create that, the monument for his company, not Robbie's. Uh -huh. But what Joe Weider did, he called me up and said, well, Robbie, I want to make you the model of my company. And I thought, hmm, a wealthy $400 million man going to let a black man be the monument for his company. Something's not this, right here. That was my whole attitude about it because I'm thinking, you got to be some behind it. My lady friend Elaine was very pissed off because she thought, you know, they're just using you. That's what she said to the, you know, uh, in the whole context of it. And I, I went out to the office for seven days. They had mm -hmm. the guy coming up with the scapula, the big mound of clay. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, wow, this is pretty interesting. You know, I'm going to just play it out and see what happened. Uh -huh. And in that process of it, the guy came in up with the scalpel and all those lines and curves and shape and veins. You were he posing was, for hours. I was posing for hours. I just sit there and hold that pole. Wow. And he would tell me flex. I would be flexing and flexing all those muscles and those muscles would be coming out. And he would just carve it in there with that little scapula all wow. over the whole body. And then my head was on it. The Fu Manchu. <laughs> the fro. The, the afro. <laughs> everything was on that statue. And I was like, I was amazed. I had never seen anything like that. I, I was an art student. I grew up in art. Uh -huh. So I seen you know, the sculpture and everything. But I was just shocked to see my own image. And it looked just like me. I was shocked. And I'm sitting there. And after he finished and everything, um, he, uh, Joe Weider said, Robbie, you know, you can leave. So I'm, I'm assuming right after I left, he did the same thing. They just painted his head on my body. Wow. That's what was happening. Wow. And then when we went to the unveiling, 
myself and Elaine. Was this, where was this, in L.A., Santa Monica? We were here in L.A. at a big gathering. There was a big party. Uh-huh. They were introducing it to all the people that had the weeder uh, supplements coming from all over the world. It must have been 5,000 people. Wow. And I, we were sitting in the orders, myself and Elaine, and uh, they rolled the big bus out on the stage, all the lights and everything. The news media was there. And I'm sitting there waiting for the unveiling, had a, sh a, a, a a blue sheet over the whole thing. And I'm thinking, wow, isn't this incredible to myself? And then Joe Weeder come on and said, this is the monument and blueprint of my company. Snatch the thing off. <laughs> Where's the fro? That's not what your fro. What happened to my head? <laughs> What happened to my head? <laughs> and my lady friend, your name was custom. That, that, that. <laughs> she was going all the way off. And I was sitting there like. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. She was going to rip off his head. <laughs> <laughs> they had to take her out of there because she just went all the way off. Wow. She was, she was pissed. Wow. Because she knew that, you know, that he had taken advantage of the situation. Yes. And then once they got back to the gym, uh, Arnold stopped working out with me completely. Wow. We was all working together, myself, Arnold, at, at Corny, mm -hmm. Danny Gable. It was the four of us. We were the train, all training together. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, he just started training with just Ed Corny by himself. Yeah. And that, I think that pretty much destroyed the relationship in a sense. That was it. Yeah. But I didn't wow. feel bad about I felt bad about the fact that I was used and taken advantage of and it created bad feelings between myself and him. Yeah. Um, and it, it's still going on to this day. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's sad, but that's, in that world, I mean, you can do things like that when you got 400 million, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And get away with it. And that's not, and as I say, I took it to court, no law firm won't even be bothered with it. Yeah, you yeah. cannot win it. You know, again, to this day, we see it everywhere. It's on the, it's everywhere. On posters. On uh, I saw it on a sweatshirt the other day. Whatever is re related to the Olympia, it's it's your bust. And I feel I've heard this story many times, and I heard it from you. And I just want the world to know this story, the truth about the bust. Mm -hmm. The bust is yours. It's Mr. Robbie <laughs> Robinson. You know, I, I'm 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 geared to go to Italy and, and do my work over there. Yes, we will talk about that too. There's a seminar. Them, yes, and. Um, Alfredo went to the IFBB people there uh -huh. in Italy. They want nothing to do with Robbie Robinson. Wow. Uh, because of the fact that I have spoken out about that whole situation. Yeah. They don't want to be bothered with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I don't. Of course. I, it's their decision to not be a part of it. And I just left it alone. When Alfredo called me and said, Robbie, the IFBB don't, don't want to have anything to do with it. They won't support it. They won't talk about it. They won't put it in the magazine. Yeah. It have nothing to do with it. You know what's interesting? Um, the same person that built the bust, the sculptor, his name is uh, Ralph Crawford. He also built the monument for Arnold in Columbus, Ohio. And he actually built all the statues and all the trophies for the Arnold Classic. Yeah, same so thing. So it's like... It's the same person, right? Yeah, same person. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So just a little uh, fact I did in my own research. And... Uh, and also the story, like I read the story. So the way they present it, they, they put their own narrative. It's like they can paint a picture and you cannot have anything to say about it because it's their magazine. And the way they said it in the magazine, they basically said, uh, they didn't, the, the sculptor says this. Uh, he didn't say, oh, I was doing Robbie for a week. He basically says, I'm actually, I'm going to read it. It's like a one sentence. What he says is... Um, Give me one second. Here's what he says. It's only one sentence. He says, It so happened that the day Crawford was at the uh, Muscle Builder office, Robbie Robinson made an appearance too. And someone suggested, How about doing that one, pointing to Robbie in color? So it's almost like somebody suggested to the sculptor, Oh, what if you do a sculpture of Robbie? That's what it said in the magazine. Yeah, exactly. Instead of saying, Actually, Joe reached out to me and asked me to pose for hours upon hours while Ralph is sculpting the bust. Mm -hmm. So 
they spin their own stories and it's like you have to buy the magazine from 50 years ago to see what they wrote and how they push that narrative that story it's amazing i mean i love studying history i love history especially it has to do with bodybuilding i love the bust story i got one more story from your competitive years so you get banned robbie decides to go to europe he goes to the red light district in amsterdam how did you end up in amsterdam why did you pick amsterdam once i realized that i was been thrown and kicked out of bodybuilding mm -hmm. and my mindset flipped over to a whole nother mindset that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And then that mindset, it would have, I probably would have, if I had reacted to that mindset of what my mind was telling me to do, you know, I probably wouldn't be here. I'd probably be in prison someplace. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I listened to the mind that said, you know, people say, God, intervention mm -hmm. you hear voices well i can say i heard a voice and that voice said to me go to europe mm. i immediately went and got a ticket to amsterdam 750 dollars i even remember how much the ticket was i took KM airlines one-way ticket from los angeles california wow to Schiphol airport amsterdam the same way you came to la with a one-way ticket now you took a one-way ticket to amsterdam yeah i took that one-way ticket to amsterdam I ended up didn't know where I was. I didn't know nobody there. Uh, so I'm in the, I'm getting into Amsterdam. I'm getting to Schiphol Airport, and then I just got on a train that says Zoutemir. <laughs> I got on the train to Zoutemir. We were riding. I got my first, you know, first class apartment. You know, got a little. You can have the first class place, or you can sit like everybody else. So I got the first class apartment. Sit back and waited. I got to Zoutemir. I get off the train. Uh huh with my bag, suitcase, checked into a hotel right there in Zoutemir. There was a cafe to eat, and I walked into the cafe and looked, and I saw all the healthy, you know, they had all the, really, you could just eat healthy food. Wow. And I thought, wow, this is what I'm going to do. So I got uh, the hotel room, and I um, got me something to eat. And I remember walking, and I walking out of the restaurant, and I remember going to my left, and I see all these beautiful women in the windows. They're all dressed up with negligees and the lingerie. All kind, of, you know, all kind of thing, naked, yeah. sitting on the stool, looking sexy and stuff. And I'm thinking, I've never seen anything. What the heck? And so I'm walking <laughs> down the street into the red light district at this point. And I'm thinking, I never knew what a red light district was, but I did. I realized what was happening. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing probably is long. I'm going to say at least a good half of a block. Wow. And a beautiful women from all over the world. I was stunned. I was like, whoa, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, I'm walking down the thing towards the, into the red light district and I'm passing the canals. All the boats in the canals where the top people had restaurants at this uh -huh. point, right? So I'm walking on down to the red like this, and I see this all these beautiful women, and I see this lady come to the one, and she goes, and I say, me, because I'm looking around, <laughs> me, and, and I, I, I said, okay, so I walked on down to the thing, came to the back door, she opened the door, and she said, come in, and I came in, and she said. Take off your clothes. Let me see what you look like. I dropped my pants, took off my shirt, and stood there. And she says, I want you to walk me to the bank every day to deposit my money into the bank. From that point on, I was able to walk all those ladies mm -hmm. that worked in the red light just those yep. that I was looking at in that windows to their bank every single day. Wow. And during that time period, the lady that had asked me to come around and let me see what I looked like, because I was physical, so they of could course. see that this big black guy got all these muscles. Uh, you know, he'd be a god to him. He, he would he'd be nice to us, you know, walk us to the bank. And so she started introducing me to all the other ladies. And from that point on, they would give me 50 gillers, 100 gillers, 75 gillers, 50 gillers. And so I started <laughs> yep. saving, all my, saving all my money. <laughs> and, and pretty soon I was able to get me an apartment. Uh-huh. Uh, the lady Maria, I would walk her, go pick her daughter from school every day. She would give me another extra 50 guilders. So I was able to get that started and make a little money 
to stabilize myself. And I stayed in Europe after that point on for 12 years. Wow. Robbie, I didn't you were... come back here to, I think, like 89 or something like that because I got invited yeah, back yeah, yeah. by Wayne DeMillion. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. So you were definitely the best built security guard in all Amsterdam. Exactly. <laughs> yep. I was, yep, that's what it was. I was the first person to do like security work for wow. those ladies in Amsterdam. Quietly done. Yep. And Maria had a daughter. So I would go every day and pick her daughter up to school, mm -hmm. take her home, come back, and walk all those ladies to the bank. It's almost like you had this angel on one shoulder and the devil. And the devil was giving you some bad advice, but you had the clarity and awareness to be like, you know what, let me check out this other voice, the voice that, or your spirit, whatever you want to call it, God, that said, Robbie, go to Europe. You had that awareness and clarity of mind to take the other way and look what happened. You know, I could have easily gotten myself in trouble going out yeah. there and maybe reacting in a violent way or attacking those people that I thought that was hurting me yeah. or trying to stop me from achieving my goals of being what I wanted to be. Um, but there's no point to go to that level. You just elevate it again. Yeah, I, just, I, that's, I totally believe that that there's a that sometimes you know, powerful things just intervene. Absolutely. You know? Like some people are playing a crash, and some people live, and some people don't. That's just how I look at life. Life can be an incredible thing, and sometimes it can be not as incredible yes. as you want it to be. But that's life. That's life, you know. You can't make it into it. You, you have no. You're not in control. Yes. You have to let what's going to be be. You have to let go, <laughs> and at the same time, do the best you can do. Yeah, that's what it is. That's, that's life. That's what I've always been. If you don't conquer yourself, yourself will conquer you. Absolutely. So I just refuse to let that happen to me. I've known a lot of people have gone through that and got themselves in a situation. Yeah. Who wants to end up in a bad situation where you're in prison for life? Yeah. That don't make sense to me. Yes. I mean, you you have to think better of yourself, do a better job of conquering yourself, because that's where to conquer your own doubts, conquer yourself. Because if you conquer yourself, then you can conquer the world. And that's the power of mindset. Yeah, it's all mindset. So you're in Amsterdam, and next thing you know, Wayne invites you back to the USA to do the first ever Masters, Mr. Olympia. What happened? No, I was at this point. I had went from Holland because I now had a nice big piece of money. I had a really nice home in Zoutemir. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of started getting exhibitions and stuff from other organizations while I was mm -hmm. there. See, that triggered me. So I got in really good shape, and I was able. to Oh, you kept training and eating and all of that. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah. I never stopped. I kept yeah. doing the same thing that. I had done my whole life. I think I you told me deviate. you were posing for Serge Nubray, right? He had his own organization, yep. Serge Nubray. Yep. See, all those things helped revive my whole bodybuilding mindset, even though I was just training and not really competing anymore. Mm -hmm. So I went to these different organizations, WBB, uh, WBBA, uh, or NABA, I won the yeah. Universe in the NABA division. All those things just kind of compiled. You know, if, if you stay with what you think is positive, and believe in yourself regardless of what the situation happened, positive things happen. Absolutely. So, Wayne invites you to do the Mr. Olympia Masters, and you are going against the incredible Hulk, Lou I, Ferrigno. <laughs> I, was, I was in, at this point, Norway. Uh -huh. I was in Norway, had got a, from that point had an apartment in Norway now. Yes, I say, got a little piece of money in my pocket in the bank, and... I uh, went to Norway and was working over there with the guy by the name of Houston. Uh -huh. He was preparing for competitions and everything. And in that process of that, he by this time there was Flex magazine. Mm -hmm. So he came. He came to me and said, "Robbie, uh, you need to co contact Wayne Demille. They're having a Mister, a Masters Mister Olympia." And I said, "Okay." So I contacted Wayne. He said, "The Masters of Mister Olympia is this date, time, nineteen ninety four." And uh, we want you to come to Mr. I started training that day. <laughs> See, I started training immediately that day, preparing myself for the competition. What my thought of it was, they need to sell tickets. Yes. The place was sold out. Uh huh. Everybody was, uh, was hoping that Lou would win it because that way Lou had a contract to do a movie. Mm -hmm. And in that process of getting ready to do that movie, um, he needed to win. Yes. And then that con in the whole concept of it, he had signed the contract, everything was done. When it came to Miss Masters of Miss Olympia, first the Masters of Miss Olympia 1994. 
the whole audience went, Woo! Robbie Robbie. <laughs> I went, mm. and the and the crowd went. That was not a silent. <laughs> Nobody said a word. It was silent. Wow. Um, Joe, the, the people that had put Lou already on all the covers, pretty much for the IFBB, uh, 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 Flex magazine, all over the world. You're talking hundreds and some, 101 countries had them on wow. the cover. So photo shoots were done. Magazines were like printed. They're ready to go out, waiting for Lou just to pick up the trophy. But he never picked up the trophy. You well, picked the trophy. Yeah. Uh, they had already groomed him because he was, as I say, he all was coming out of the acting pretty much. Now Lou is the next one in line. Yes. That's what was supposed to happen. But Lou lost the competition. They, he canceled the contract. It, I think it pretty much messed him up permanently. Yeah. It was not the same after that. Yeah. And, and that, that's, that's, again, you have that up and down thing of in life. He went from the Hulk to... Not being recognized for the match after yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, him losing the match of Olympic cost him millions yeah. of dollars. Because you're talking movies, covers, yeah. sponsorships. Yeah. Everything. And Joe Weider, because Lou lost, mm -hmm. Wayne DeMille was kicked out as the president of the IFBB. Wow. If you notice, he's not there. Jim Mannion took over. Uh huh. Okay. Because Jim Mannion was Wayne's right hand guy. Makes sense. Okay? And in that, in that process, um, <laughs> Wayne became extinct. Um, my win in the competition, the reason I won it, by one point. Wow. Wayne gave me that one point. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. yeah, I think I, where was it? I saw it was 300 for each one of you, and Wayne, Wayne gave the, one, so it was one 301. Point, Wayne, see, what happened, Wayne and the Perignos had got into it. Oh, wow. And so that was a big mess in that whole look. For some conference of things, yes, and all, and Wayne gave me that one point. Wow, redemption! Talking about redemption, yeah. coming full circle, and I, you told me this amazing story about the check. You got a check for twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> what was what else was on the check? You know, that was a sad moment for me because I thought that in the process of all of that. That um, twenty five thousand is my thinking. I said, "Well, it's twenty five thousand. Lou will get ten. I will get five, and then Boyer Cole will get three to four, and then thousand for maybe to the next couple of people." But I won the whole thing when I got the the twenty five thousand dollars check. At first, I looked at it and I thought, "That's not my name <laughs> to myself," and it said. Lou Ferrigno. Oh, my God. So I walked over to Wayne after it all was done. Everybody was talking. And they had Joe in the corner. All the conscious had Joe in the corner against the wall, screaming and hollering. That was no banquet that night. Uh -huh. Because every time there was a competition. Sure. There was no celebration. <laughs> <laughs> the banquet, no banquet canceled. that night. And I went, I said, oh, mm, no banquet <laughs> to this night. And in the process of all of that, um, it, it was it was a bad scene. That's that's yeah. that's what I, I remember the most. But about. you basically just it's, went to Wayne. Went, and the tears in my eyes right now about it because it was, I thought it would be hell better than that, but it yeah. wasn't hell better than that because it caused a lot of pain for everybody. Of really, course, yeah. So you ended up going to Wayne and just told him like, "Hey, Wayne, can you change the name?" You know, the check. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You know, really seriously, tears in my eyes right now because when I looked at the check, it says Lou Ferrigno. Wow. So I walked over to Wayne. I said, Wayne, my name is not, my name is not Lou Perigno. <laughs> he said, what? I said, Lou's name is on this check. And he took the check and came back later to my room and gave me the check that with Robbie Roberts, 25000 on it. Wow. Amazing But that's, story. you know, he was supposed to win it. Yeah. I was supposed to come in second. I mm -hmm. already had pictured that out. They needed to sell tickets. Yes. They know that I sell tickets. You yeah. know that I had this incredible, astonishing physique, but they were going to give it to Lou anyway. Yes. I already knew that. So I wasn't offended about it. I just had been doing it and going through that for so long. You just come. Totally. You know, you come. You come. I mean, that's how they sold the tickets. It was the yeah. Incredible Hulk versus the Black Prince. Yeah. And uh, the Hulk. Yep. People wanted to see incredible physique. Yes. So me coming there and, 
and dominating and winning the show. I mean, if when we came out on the stage, they kept Lou as far away from me as they could. Wow. That was the whole Don't thing. Don't compare. And I, I observed it. And then right at the time we came posed down, I just came out of the lineup. Boom. Right so next I, to boom. him. Boom. <laughs> okay. So check this out. This was, I think, Lou at his biggest. He was over 300 pounds. And you were like, what, 210? Probably 210. 210. 10, so we're talking 12. 100 pound difference. And you were almost as big as him because you were sculpted. But you know what the downfall of, of the thing with Lou was? Too much color. He had too mm. much. It washed out all the lines, all the muscularity. Oh, wow. And that's what they told him. See, because my skin is so dark, yes. they wanted him to duplicate that. But he's, a, he's white. You can't do that. Because yeah. if you do it, it's going to wash all the lines out. Wow. And that's what he did. But then when they went backstage to try to clean him up, it was too late. Yeah. They already yeah. messed up. Yeah. Fast forward to present day. As I said, Robbie is this young, youthful, strong, 78 years. I'll say it again. Young. Sexy. <laughs> and sexy. Exactly. Don't forget. <laughs> Longevity. It's something that uh, I am constantly learning and educating myself so I can give it to my clients. Come on, hey. Because that's the name of the game. It's it's like there, what's the point if you don't have longevity? And you're doing it at the highest level. It's just, again, there's nobody else on the planet that looks like you at your age, not even 10 or 20 years younger. There's nobody. So that's why I went to you because I wanted to learn from the masters, the mm -hmm. experts. You're the one. And uh, there are a few components. There is the mindset. There's the training. There's the nutrition. There's the sleep. There's the supplementation. And you call this the blueprint. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the blueprint. I know there is also a documentary coming out with Generation Iron. It's you and Tim Taylor. It's your life story, and it's also the blueprint. It's coming out soon, and uh, I know it's going to be amazing because you're amazing, or should I say awesome. Uh, tell me just a little bit more. Let, let's break it down. So tell me, like you said, number one in your blueprint is water. Why water? You told me it's like the most anabolic thing. I've always thought that water, a lot of people say, well, you know, I was holding water. Well, if you Hole in water is automatically means you weren't drinking enough. Mm. A lot of people look at their physique and they say, well, I'm bloated. Well, you're bloated because you're not drinking enough water. If you're having pains in your stomach and your system and you don't feel as well, it's all because of water. It's the best steroid antibiotic that you could ever take. You need that water to build muscle. That water is collecting in the skin mm -hmm. and the organs. So you have to keep those organs nourished so they can slip and slide off each other better. Food can slide in and out of your stomach better. Mm -hmm. I mean, you kidneys are triggered automatically. You drink a certain amount of water and the body flushes that word out. But, you know, as, you, as you're doing all of these things, I can still say that water has been my number one antibiotic steroid. I've learned how to manipulate my body. All the body water can, that's in mm -hmm. the skin and under the skin, I can transfer that water into the muscle cells. So I look just like I'm on own antibiotic steroid. Absolutely. You know what? I... When I discovered the water thing, it blew my mind because I, I thought like too much water is just too much. And next thing you know, I'm drinking a gallon of water, which is four liters or 3.85, eight pounds of water a day. I weigh only 150 pounds. And by the next day, I'm down to the same exact weight. Exactly. exactly. It's like it's not like your body's going to retain it. So tomorrow I'm 158, then the day after I'm another eight pounds or no, the body just flushes it and gets used to it. And 80% of muscle is what? It's water. It's water, so it needs the water. <laughs> yeah, it, needs, it has to keep the water in there to nourish the body and keep the body's organs nourished. I mean, people say, well, I got, a, I have a kidney problem. Well, you got kidney problem because you're not drinking enough water. You're not consuming <laughs> you're not cleansing. And adequate amounts yes. you know, throughout the day. Once the body gets regulated, all of a sudden your body becomes more muscular, toner, stronger, you, you have a better overall digestive reaction to your foods. Everything is in and out of your body. That's what your body should be doing, flushing it in and out consistently so that you can build muscle and burn fat. Even the metabolism goes up. Yeah, it, it, build, it, it lifts the whole body. It makes your body build muscle and burn fat. I love That's it. what water does. And if you're not getting enough, your body's not going to do that. 
<clears throat> I love when you go like this. Mindset. It's all mindset. Positive、Practice. state of mind. And I know you say weak mind, weak body. Yeah. Talk to me about it. Why is mindset so important? I mean, look, you are where you are today. Huge part of it is your mindset.、Mm -hmm. You cannot look like this and be like this and act like that, have this energy without that mindset.、Mm -hmm. Tell me about your mindset, Robbie. I think, you know, my whole concept of it, the mind is, is how you think. You know, the more you think positive about something, the more positive things come into your life. If you start allowing negative things to slip into that mindset, then negative things come into your mind. Me, I just always try to think. It's very important what you say to yourself. Robbie, training. You are a huge advocate of proper mind muscle connection and、uh, contraction. And whenever we train, you kept saying body position, body position. You always were so strict on body position. I feel like that's one of the reasons, like, you're one, the only person I know that's never been injured. Like, you have zero injuries, nothing torn. And I know, like, so many people, like, even big champions, I want to, like, I mentioned one, Ronnie Coleman, but. He was lifting so many heavy weights, and today he can, I don't know if he can walk. So, proper execution of the training. How, how important is this、uh, mind muscle connection and, and,、uh, and the body position it, it, for you it, when training? It, 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 you can't just move weight, that's、yeah. not going to build any muscle. And by the way, moving weight is not bodybuilding. Moving weight is not bodybuilding. Moving weight is just moving weight. It's moving weight.、Yeah. You're not going to actually. Feel any muscle, you just if I what I see today, the guy's just moving weight, it's not really contracting that muscle, they're not focusing on involving themselves in the negative.、Uh, it's body position, how you put your body in the position. One of the main reasons people get injured is because of the lack of body position. If you have their body off the feet in one position and one is another way, you're gonna have a problem. So, this in a way takes us from training to Recovery. This is part of the recovery. Exactly. Like you have to, because training is about contraction and compression. You're compressing those joints. You、exactly. have to release them. If you don't release、exactly. them, you keep compressing to a point where injury happens. Exactly. So you have to release what's being compressed. Exactly. It, 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 you got to realize that those fibers are like that. It's hundreds of them.、Mm -hmm. So if you go in there, you're going to try to behind the next 300 pounds. Those fibers are going to start going in, in a certain angle.、Mm -hmm. That's why people get it. But see, I don't have mine. It's always like that. Yeah. So that way, I've never had an injury. That's why I've never had an injury. I do the same thing in my lower back. I put, lay it on the floor, put it right in the cup of my back, and roll on that ball all over that area. And what that does again, <laughs> it, it loosens up the tissue, p r e p a r e the tissue for the heavy lifting. Man. Yeah. Here's an interesting question for you. If you can pick one exercise for each body part, what would you pick? Let's, let's go by body part. If you can pick only one. If I was going to do shoulders, I seriously wanted to do, build incredible muscular shoulders. Okay, shoulders. Behind the neck press. Behind, okay. Behind the neck press, and I would lean, make sure that weight,、mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pressing the deltoid. But what、Got、people、it. do is what I see is this. Yes. See, but you're not going to feel in the deltoids with、Got、that.、It. Oh, that's going to be putting all that pressure right on that joint. Now, boom, and you go forward like that,、mm -hmm. it stretches all the whole shoulder girdle, all those muscles affected. If I was going to do a ch so chest. Now, before we go to chest, is that the shoulder press is dumbbell or barbell? Or does barbell. it matter? Barbell, barbell or dumbbell. Barbell. Boom. Okay, either way. Okay.、Chest. That's what it's supposed to be doing. Boom. You're not supposed to just be pushing it. Got it. But you're just pushing it. The body is like this. It should、yes. be like that. See? Got that upper back arch. Upper so, back arch.、Uh, you always tell me upper back <laughs> arch. Yeah, that's I love、is. it.、Just、give me one for chest. Okay. What's chest. one exercise? Chest, if I were going to do chest, it would be definitely a, a dumbbell presses or barbell presses. Awesome. Definitely. That would be my, Angle, my two. Angle, flat, incline? Both. Both. So, preferably both. I would go back and forth between both. Okay.、Basically. Bicep. Give me one for bicep. Bicep. Me, if I'm trying to like really stress my bicep, I was putting my back against the wall, my knees out in front of me a little bit.、Mm -hmm. That forces all the weight to be on the bicep.、Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have my shoulders here, I'd have my shoulders there. You always pull your shoulders back. I always the pull the shoulders back because you're in the upper back arch position. Got it. All the pressure is kept on the bicep. If I bring my shoulder forward, 
the shoulder's going to carry the load too. See what I'm saying? That's what has happened. People don't realize that. But if you got your body like this, then it's all bicep. Here, if you're not turning your wrist, you're not going to mm -hmm. build in the bicep. Mm -hmm. You can't keep the wrist straight. You have to turn them. It's like you're going flexing. Yep. Flexing. So all that stress is placed like on the squeezing bicep. Squeezing. It's squeezing. All. Squeezing. Hold it one, two seconds. Yep. And slowly lower it down. But I'll see if you, yep. you go forward. If you're going forward, stress is on the lower back. Yeah. Tricep. Tricep. My choice would be to to do um, close skip easy bar press. Mm. Because what that does, that affects the whole biceps, all three heads of the tricep. I would let the weight come down, elbows here, instead of... Uh, we, we're, here talking, here. we're talking on a flat bench, right? A flat bench. Okay, so yeah. you're hitting kind of three things. You're a little bit of chest, a little bit of front delt, and a lot of tricep. That's right. Awesome. See, so in, in my thinking, at right at the end, I lift it up. Mm. That way I'm hitting front delts, pecs, all three hips of the truck. Man, we should call this the Robbie special. Three in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 more I'm 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 like focused on everything. Yeah. I don't just kind of play of course. my next exercise would be safe I for tricep. Uh-huh. Rope extension. Oh, you did those to me. You see, oh what, my God. What is happening here, the closer you keep your head, yep. your elbows to the head, it, it's flexed all three heads of the tricep. You're pushing that rope like this, and again, again you got mm -hmm. that upper back arc. Yep. You're letting that weight go all the way down and press. You're keeping the elbows close to the head. And what I see, everybody got them sprayed. Mm -hmm. So you're not really, what you're working is this. Yeah, you want your person. elbows to your ears. Yeah, you, you have to keep it close to that side of yes. your head. The more you're doing that, that stresses the tricep off the stress of the tricep automatically. Give me one for back. What? what I, mean, I know back, chin ups. Chins. Mm. Chins to the front. Yep. Chins to the back. Pins to the front, chins to the back. Wow. The next one for the back would be T roll bar. One for abs. Abs. Hanging leg raises. Hanging leg line raises. Line raises. I love those. Th those are the two exercises where it doesn't, it affects the whole area. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On benches, mm, you know, the, 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 the uh, ab machine, mm, mm -hmm. hanging leg raises. Yeah. That just because creates that whole V taper. Totally. And it stretches the tissue so you get more separation. Exactly. So it would be my choice. Okay. We go to legs now. Quads. Oh, definitely. It's like a squat. Squats. Squats. You got the it squats work the whole body. Yeah. You got to get that squat in there. Leg presses, it's, it's a day you'd want to have a break. Yeah. Get that lower back a break. If you, you want to train legs, squat. Squats. Okay, hamstring. Definite lines on the front, on your stomach, and stiff leg deadlift. Mm. With your leg, with your, with your body in an odd position where you're kind of leaning back. Oh, yeah. With the, again, upper back arch, all the presses on the hamstring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Calves? Donkeys. Donkeys. Anybody sit on your back and you're doing five sets of 20. Because see, that's all we did. Very seldom that you see a bodybuilder back in the old days using the seated calf machine or mm -hmm. the standing calf machine. Sure. It's just donkeys. You got all get on your back for 20 reps. Wow. All in, uh, Franco and all will get on your back for 20 reps. And you got to get 20 reps. Yep. That heavy weight, the bite is on your bike. Hey, it's nothing like it. All right. So that's training. Let's go to sleep and recovery so i mean we talked about recovery using the ball anything else that you do for recovery like do you take massages chiropractic you know one of the, one of the things that i've practiced throughout my whole career was fascia therapy fascia therapy um dean murray used to, i used to go to him at least mm -hmm. once or twice a week what he would do is in my documentary you'll see it in the documentary okay dean murray was the person that would kind of go into the joints mm -hmm. loosen all that tissue up yeah, basically, when you get through working out, the shoulders are like this. Yes. When Dean get through you, mm -hmm. they're flat. So fascia therapy, definitely get massages. Fascia therapy and massages are probably one of the best things you could do to help stimulate muscle growth and release of all the fascia. If the fascia is tied up, you're not going to be able to build any muscle. Totally. So if the tassel is relaxed, then you're able to build more muscle. And everything flows better. There's better circulation. The nutrition gets to where it needs to get. Um you, we grow when we rest, not when we train. So, sleep. You got to get How many seven. hours? You, seven? You should have at least a good seven. Wow. Seven and a half. Little naps along the way. Mm -hmm. That plays a role in it because that's, that's what I do a lot of. You know, get through training, eat yes. my food, boom. I fall yes. out for a couple of hours. 
<laughs> and and the next day I do the same thing. I keep constantly try to get at least seven. Yeah, but well, you're not you're seven. not sleeping. You're growing. <laughs> oh yeah, you're sleeping. The, the body can't build muscle when yeah. you're training. Of it's course, it's breaking the tissue it's down. It's breaking down. So if you don't get enough rest, it's different amount of you, you know, amount of- Robbie. I tell all my clients, I have 100 success rate with weight loss when I train my clients. They never gain weight when I train them because you cannot gain weight when you're training. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> they gain the weight in the other they 23 They want to gain hours. weight, but you can't. Yeah. You, it's when you eat. Yeah. That's when you gain weight. In the gym, when you're training, you're losing weight. Yeah. Okay. Supplementation. Uh, you're one of the guys that inspired me to constantly drinking <laughs> my... EAAs and BCAAs <laughs> and my glutamine over here and I keep sipping throughout the day. This is my third liter. I got another one after this. And then also when I train, uh, I also make sure I have creatine and I also have some beta alanine. You're huge on supplementation. You're always like nourishing the body. So you're not just hydrating, you're actually feeding. You keep drinking constantly. You have the aminos, right? Mm -hmm. You got the glutamine, creatine, bet Beta alanine. I'm, I'm missing a couple. I think you also mentioned the arginine. My, my whole supplement uh, regime consists of glutamine. Glutamine. The first thing in the morning, I have like, a, I have, I put in my first drink, mm -hmm. uh, five scoops of glutamine. Wow. Okay. Then I go from one scoop of creatine. Okay. Uh, one scoop of l because mm -hmm. you're talking testosterone building. The creatine, you're talking muscle building, strength. The glutamine helps your body recover from the workout. Arginine yes. is for the heart. It strengthens the heart. Vitamin C. I put a scoop of vitamin C in there. Mm -hmm. I put B vitamins in there. B vitamins. I yeah. think, That's wasn't good. it also, you got the B vitamins through intravenously with the IV? Yeah. What, what I do occasionally is I say I will go to Dr. Rand and I get the same supplements intravenous. Yes. All those same glutamine, creatine, amino acids. Yes. I get all of that in a solution. So and is that uh, the absorption rate is way better when you get it with the IV? Oh yeah, it goes right into the bloodstream. You God. automatically wow. fills the body back out because the body is low because you're working out and it helps the body recover. Yeah. Uh, one of the main ingredients that he put in there takes about 30 minutes mm -hmm. and that is the, uh, uh, glutathione. Glutathione, yeah. yeah. The glutathione helps regenerate the body. It's almost like anti-aging. You don't age as fast. Mm -hmm. If you take it in the, at night, you sleep like a baby. You know, I did it once and I did notice a huge difference. Yeah. I need to do it more often. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, if, if you if you do it, you'll notice a huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. You sleep like a baby when you do glutathione before you go to well, sleep. Well, definitely uh, because your about body... three hours after your last meal. Yeah. Two to three hours after your last meal, take, mm. a, take a, 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 a glutathione. That's what I do every night before I go to bed. When we trained, you had this little oxygen tank with you. And I know you also do the hyperbaric chamber a few times a week. I mean, you're huge I've been using oxygen. this. I've been using this for like years, you know. Wow. And I used to put it out and people would say, oh, man, you hear people make comments like, I mean, I guess he must have a, he must be getting old. He's not getting enough oxygen or something like that. But I do, I've been using this back, even back in the 70s, but I didn't take it to the gym. Mm -hmm. So what it does is help keep the oxygen level up yeah. in the bloodstream. So that, again, you're talking building muscle and burning fat. Of course. Yeah. So this is why, I mean, all of these things, you're so optimized that at 78, you look the way you look. Like there is so much more to it. And these are all like, you can call them the secrets, but they're not really secrets. It's just nobody, not secrets. Everybody knows about it, but nobody's doing it. But you are doing them every day. Single day. I do yeah. this every single day. I take this to the gym and I'll get oxygen... I get to set a lunge. I do up and down. Yeah. Up and down. I'll get me a hit of oxygen or two, right? Mm -hmm. I'll get me, a, again, feeding my body with amino acids and all the nutrients I have in the jaw. I'll yeah. do that throughout my workout. When I get through, I will probably have about that much. Yeah. I go back and fill this bottle back up and I do it again. Okay. The only thing I add is then is glutamine because I need to recover. A little vitamin C, glutamine, a little l citrulline mm -hmm. Something like that to keep the, your overall antibiotics level up in your bloodstream. So, so this is pretty much Robbie's blueprint, and uh, you, uh, everybody will be able to see way, way more about yeah. your blueprint into the documentary that's coming out soon. It, correct? Exactly. Uh, what I see out there today is no disrespect to all the guys that are pushing. Uh, um, what is it? Um, 
or what is it on, on Instagram and all this stuff about mm -hmm. do this, do that, or that don't work or this don't work. I'm telling you, it worked. Yeah. The RR Blue six step program worked. Yeah. And I've seen results. Just me seeing you, the little changes that you've made. Yes. The changes you've made. I see a complete difference in your physique. When you saw you with uh with Vince, I said, cheese. I said, yeah. my man's face. <laughs> Got a good a peek as Vince. Yeah, we peeking. No. Yeah, you're peeking it. That's great. <laughs> But well, it's just all you're making changes. Yeah, you know, if you don't make the is, changes, man. you can't expect the results. You know what? I, I mean, I gotta give some credit to you absolutely for better peaks to my bicep. And I went to Vince just to train arms. I wanted to get my peaks with Vince. And guess what? Vince <laughs> said. I can Vince see that. Said you inspired him, and you inspired him like millions of people, thanks to just being who you are and. Uh, I mean, uh, we'll uh, release my uh, training with Vince very soon and you'll see what he said. But basically he said, he sent you a letter and you replied and he was mind blown that you actually replied. He, you were like his inspiration and that encouraged him to become the bodybuilder who he is. Uh, he's another five times masters, Mr. Olympia. Hey. And he credits you yeah. for his peaks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm flipping through the bodybuilding uh, Dan Laurie magazines and stuff like that. Wow, wow. And here's Rob. Okay, the Black Prince. Yes, I ain't touched the weight. I don't know about bodybuilding, right? I'm like, oh my God, I want to look like this guy. He's crazy. This is crazy, right? So I found myself writing Robbie a letter. Oh no way! Writing Robbie a letter, bro. Wow. I'm going like, and he wrote back. I was like, gone. Wow. Gone. When he sent me that letter, he sent me a black and white picture. I was so excited. A handwritten letter. Penmanship was out of this world. And I remember my mom saying, "This letter is beautifully written." I'm sitting on the front porch of my house, reading it over and over again. Right? Robbie Robinson, Robbie Robinson, Black Prince. I'm just looking at everybody, Dave wow. Drapers, and all these people. Right? And then all of a sudden, you watch time evolve itself, and boom. Not only did I take his advice and train, Vince trained the big muscle groups first. Yeah, you know, train like this, train like that. That was my diet. That's my diet. I'm going to train like Robbie, right? And then, of course, my whole thing was those freaking arms. Yes. And now, so I speed forward. Yeah. I started training like that, man. Cause I, 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 dude, I started training like that. Next thing I know, here it is, 2000 and blah blah blah. Dude, I'm on stage with Robbie. Yeah. I got 21 inch arms like Robbie. Wow. I mean, I'm a carbon copy of what he told me to do. Wow, I did it. The shit worked great. We was on stage together for the Masters. Yes. I mean, the whole nine, man. It's like history. Totally. Man. It's oh. like Robbie. You hit from one Mr. Olympia to another. <laughs> Mr. Olympia, Masters, Master. to the other Masters. Uh, this was, you know, when I saw first saw his figure, I said, whoa. He got the small joints, yes. big muscle belly. And why wouldn't I not do that? I mean, I would do that for you, you could be green. Yeah. I would still say, hey, if you got the potential, go for it. Yeah. And I encouraged him. I told him that you can do it. it you know, do all the little pieces and parts that you need to do it. He became Mr. Massimus of five times. Yeah. And it just speaks uh, volumes to uh, your persona. You're a generous person. You, you like to give. And I totally appreciate that. Uh, two more people I'm going to give example as that you inspired and it's just as anybody one Lee Haney he credits you the only poster that he was his mom let him have in his room was your poster <laughs> and when he first met you I watched your podcast with him he said that he had a dollar in his pocket and you signed the dollar with your autograph he yeah. said that's the only autograph he ever gotten <laughs> since so that's eight times Mr. Olympia. Mm. And then I also watched the one with Dorian Yates. And Dorian said when he was, I think, 14 or something yeah. or 16, he went, uh, he was doing karate. So he went to the magazine stand and he saw your cover and he picked it up. He bought it and that inspired him. Yeah. So right here, we're talking eight times Mr. Olympia Lee yeah. Haney, six, six times, times Yates, and even five times Vince Taylor. That's 20-plus hey. Mr. Olympias that you have inspired. So you've given back so much. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's important to be able to give back to, to people that you can definitely look at and see that they have that potential to achieve their goal. Why not inspire them? That's what we all should be doing, inspiring each other. I mean, if you look at animals, when I sometimes go on Instagram and I see animals, 
saving other animals. I mean, that's what humans should be doing, saving each other. Yes. But for some reason, we just kind of detoured. And I don't know, not talking down about we as human beings become selfish. Yes. And to me, that, that's, I think that's just put a pain in humanity, really. Yeah. You know, I love helping people see others grow, improve on what they're trying to get done. It empowers you too. Absolutely. That's what I think. Robbie, you're a gift, and, and thank you for sharing all the knowledge with everybody. Oh, yeah, I love it. Um, I got a couple more questions. and then, Sure, uh, go for it. So, they will be, this will be rapid, like simple answer. Or I, I don't know if they'll be simple, but what's the most important lesson you've learned in your life? The most what? Important lesson that you've learned. That I've learned? Yes. Challenges, so Be unafraid to... If you make mistakes, you make them, but don't let them become totally you out. And I think that's what a lot of, of humans do. They go through a bad time and they think that's the last of the, they can best that they can do. And some people take their, take themselves out. To yeah. me, I think take yourself out by challenging yourself. Take yourself out by saying, I'm going to be better than that. I can do better than that. You know, I was talking to a lady friend of mine. And she came to me and said, can you do better than that? Mm. So I got this T-shirt I'm coming out with. You can do better than that. And that's what I always think about myself. You know, if you get into a doubt or something bad happened in your life, that's just that moment. Yeah. You're not supposed to let that moment create the end of your life. You should let that moment ch challenge myself. You get up and do better. Uh, make changes. Yes. Be unafraid to... Um, I have this thing that I've been writing. It says, stay positive, work hard, make it happen. Mm, and see, a lot of it. people refuse to, to, to look at it that way. Uh, greatness is a choice. Absolutely. You know, you don't have to be perfect, but if you, it's a choice. Even the challenge is a choice. You choose to embrace the challenge. Oh, yeah. Motivation can start things off but it takes enthusiasm and, and, and the ability to make yourself better to overcome anything that has become a negative in your life. I just believe in making myself better. I love it. Inspire others. Motivate others to become better. Yes. That's, what, that's one of my thoughts. If, if I can help you become better, that makes me better. That's how I see you it. You know what? Uh, my next question was going to be, how do you want to be remembered? And I feel like that you just answered my question, which is, inspire others i mean i i'll ask you how do you want people to remember you robbie how how would you like people to remember you when you're 120. <laughs> <laughs> i have never really thought about that but i always think motivating other people you inspire them to do better, inspire them to challenge themselves. Absolutely. Look in the mirror and say, again, I can do better than that. Yes. Not let that one moment totally you out or tell you that you can't do better. You can always do better. You just got to believe in yourself. Totally. And if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. Yeah. Robbie, do you have any regrets? No, because if I have a regrets, then I'm not going to be able to, to um, get better. So I, I don't have any regrets about things. Whatever has happened, has happened. The most important thing is that I just want to keep going on with the life that I have left. I love it. Yeah, I'm I in a happy it. place. Uh, yeah. I'm happy about what I've accomplished. You know, I always want to accomplish more. You just always want to do better. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And talking about accomplishing more, there is more good things coming. Actually, there is a big seminar coming up this month in Italy in March. 24th of March in Naples, Italy. I'm all excited about it. Um, I'm in an awesome shape. You've been preparing for this seminar like it's a competition. Yeah. You're in your peak shape almost. And yeah, you're going to peak, peak for shape, it. And coming up in a, probably another week, I'll peak myself out. We'll get great pictures, ship them all the way back to Italy and all the fans on Facebook and Instagram. Wow. 
we're going to post also the information about uh, this seminar in Italy. Whoever wants to go and see Robbie uh, live in uh, his amazing shape, you definitely should check it out. This is a lifetime opportunity for you to go and check it out. And also, I mean, I've gone through uh, all the material you're putting out. Like I've been through your books. I've been through, big shout out to also to your DVDs. All of these, I have to because I love them. Check out the, the master class, and there is also the built. If you want to learn, get the DVDs. We'll post the links where to get them on Robbie's website. Um, what else, Robbie? You got the Generation Iron documentary coming out. So big things coming, great things coming. It's going to be a great year. I'm all excited. Man, I'm super <laughs> excited, and uh, I've enjoyed every second Definitely appreciate it. of this talk. I consider you a huge inspiration. I consider you a mentor, and I consider you most of all a friend. I just want to thank you again and uh, appreciate the space. My pleasure, and maybe I'll see you in Italy, huh? Oh, definitely, huh? Let's do it. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. All right. Love it. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Awesome.